One of the premier astronomical observatories in the world isn't located out in space or on the top of a tall mountain, but found a kilometer underground in the Mozumi Mine under Mount Akino in Japan. Named Super Kamiokande, or Super K for short, it's a 40 meter tall steel tank holding over 50,000 tons of ultra-pure water. Why is this observatory so deep underground? And what is it looking for? What scientists are looking for are ghost-like particles called neutrinos. These subatomic particles are quite different from the ordinary matter making up the world around us because they only respond to two of the four forces in nature, passing straight through normal matter. There are over 100 trillion racing through your body every second, yet due to their infrequent interactions, you could live for a hundred years and never have a single one hit your body. In fact, they can pass through an entire light year of solid lead, with only a 50% chance of hitting anything. Though neutrinos rarely interact with matter, they are literally everywhere, and are in fact the most common massive particle in the universe. The main source on Earth is from the fusion reactions taking place in the Sun, but they can come from other cosmic sources as well, such as supernovae and black holes. Even the banana you eat for breakfast produces neutrinos. And while common in number, they are quite uncommon in their strange properties. They have almost no mass, travel at nearly the speed of light, and they are not even a single particle but come in three different flavors, the electron, the muon, and the tau neutrino. With a flood of neutrinos everywhere, but an almost undetectable presence, how did we ever find these particles? Well, it wasn't easy. First theorized in the 1930s to balance out the equations of a type of nuclear decay called beta decay, it took a quarter century before scientists would finally discover them. To have the best chance of detecting neutrinos, scientists needed an extremely large source. Originally, they considered using a nuclear weapon and while an excellent source of neutrinos, cooler heads prevailed and they eventually decided to search for them next to a nuclear reactor instead. Located next to the reactor 12 meters underground was a tank of water, where very occasionally, the neutrino would interact with a proton and produce two particles, a neutron and a positron. The positron is the antimatter counterpart to the electron and would be annihilated in an instant producing two gamma rays which could be detected. The neutron would be absorbed by cadmium chloride also in the water, producing its own gamma ray exactly five microseconds later. This double gamma ray signal was all the proof needed to convince scientists that neutrinos did indeed exist. So why do we look for neutrinos deep underground? The reason is cosmic rays. These are high energy protons and atom fragments from space which create a shower of particles when they hit our atmosphere. They interfere with the neutrino detectors by creating noise and false signals. Since neutrinos can travel through the Earth nearly entirely unimpeded, we can reduce cosmic ray noise by simply pushing the detectors farther and farther into the Earth, blocking these rays, but not the neutrinos. Returning now to Super K, we see that this observatory is many generations more advanced than the first detector built in the 50s, though it has many similarities. With its large take of water buried underground and surrounded by photomultiplier tubes, and while its scale is much, much larger, it also detects neutrinos through a different type of radiation called Cherenkov radiation. If you've ever seen the blue glow of a nuclear reactor's cooling pool, that's Cherenkov radiation. It's caused when the particles exceed the speed of light in the water. And while you may know that nothing can go faster than the speed of light, that's only true in a vacuum. When light travels through materials, its speed is reduced, and very high energy particles can exceed that velocity, causing the optical equivalent of a sonic boom. When picked up by the detectors, this points out the direction the neutrino came from. The ability to detect the direction opens up a whole new world of neutrino research. What was once just a detector can now be used as a telescope. One of the truly amazing things which has been accomplished with Super K is the first ever picture taken of the core of the sun. While light takes a convoluted 100,000 year path to exit from the core, neutrinos travel straight out through the sun at nearly the speed of light, entirely unimpeded. 
whizzing out through the sun on its eight minute journey to Earth, and then through the Earth itself, they every so often create that faint blue glow in Super K. And while it took 500 days to collect enough neutrinos to make an image, a picture of the core of the sun was now a reality. While neutrinos are an exciting and active area of interest for physicists, they may be of great practical use in the future as well. Imagine being able to communicate with neutrinos by sending messages through the inside of a planet, or using neutrinos to detect minerals or oil in the Earth. Neutrinos may turn into a great technological asset for the future, but in the meantime, we still have much to learn from them. Two of the biggest unsolved mysteries in physics, what is dark matter, and why do we even have matter in the universe, may be closely linked to neutrinos. It may be that one of the lightest, most invisible particles in the universe is the answer to some of the very biggest questions. <laughs> 